Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to web, web webinar series of from Faculty of Electrical Engineering. For your information, this is our our first series of webinar where this series will be given by all the directors of the directors from the School of Electrical Engineering in the research area as well as from the head of research group. So for today, we are going to have uh, the first presenter uh, is Dr. Jeff, Professor Dr. Jeffrey Bentin. First of all, I would like to read the biodata from Professor Jeffrey Bentin. Jeffrey Bentin received his Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering from Tri-State University in Diana, USA in 1988, and his PhD from University of Malaysia in 1997. He has been with UTM as Assistant Lecturer lecturer and associate professor from 1989 to 2018. Since August 2018, he has been appointed as a professor of radio wave propagation at the School of Electrical Engineering UTM. He has been head of department, undergraduate academic manager and deputy dean Denver in the Faculty of Electrical Engineering UTM. Currently, he is a director of Wireless Communication Center at UTM. He has been actively involved in research activities in the fields of radio wave propagation, satellite propagations and communications, high altitude platform station, weather radar and sound technique for official industries. He has graduated 13 PhD students, candidates and currently supervising four PhD candidates in the field of radio wave propagation. Since July 2015, he participated in KA band propagation measure campaign in close collaboration with European Space Agency, Journal Research, Austria, and New Zealand. authored and co authored more than 100 research articles in international journals and international conference proceedings. Now, I would like to invite Professor Dr. Jeffrey Dindin to give his speech in the Industry Academia 5D RD Partnership at Wireless Communication Center in the end. Please welcome Professor Dr. Jeffrey. Okay, uh, thank you, Prof. Kama. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And also good afternoon for viewers or participants from Malaysia and similar time zone. And good day for the viewers from the rest of the time zone. Today, I would like to share a short sharing session uh, related to industry, academia, 5G, R&D partnership, at WCC UTM. So this short sharing session will be divided into three segments. Uh, before uh, the last segment focusing on the activities and partnership between academia, which is WCC UTM and industry. So I would like to take this opportunity to introduce briefly WCC UTM and then followed by uh, expectation when we are dealing uh, when we are discussing about partnership between academia and industry okay let me introduce uh, WCC UTM WCC is one of the high CoE in UTM in UTM alone we do have four uh, high CoE and in Malaysia under Ministry of Higher Education we do have 20 high COEs all together. Okay, as for WCC UTM, we started way back in 1989 uh, as a research lab known as Wireless Communication Research Lab. Uh, I started joining UTM and also this research group in 1989 and during that time we are focusing and seriously involved in providing training to telcos, such as uh, the main telcos that available during that time. Slowly, uh, we increase our main power and expertise by working very closely with uh, manufacturers such as uh, Ericsson Sweden, NTT Docomo, and also uh, start to participate in uh, activities related to uh, standardizations uh, under ITU related to cellular phone during that time. Uh, 
uh, and we are working very closely uh, under MCMC as well. Throughout these years, uh, as research laboratory, we participate actively in postgraduate activities within Faculty of Electrical Engineering uh, during that time, now known as School of Electrical Engineering under Faculty of Engineering UTM. Participate and securing quite a number of research grants under uh, government, uh, Ministry uh, of Science and also Ministry of Education and also under MTDC within uh, Malaysian government. Later, we worked very closely with MCMC and we started to receive uh, recognitions from uh, UTM alone and also from the Malaysian government, uh, whereby we started to, to get a significant amount of research allocation and research uh, and collaboration opportunity uh, very closely working with uh, MCMC. So for viewers from outside Malaysia, I will, I will later uh, introduce a bit uh, about all these entities that have been uh, mentioned uh, just now. Okay, as high COE, we started to receive this award or recognition from Ministry of Higher Education in, nine, in 2014. So under the first phase from 2014 un until 2017, we've been given uh, this status, Center of Excellence, uh, Higher Institute Center of Excellence in Malaysia with a given niche area in radio wave antenna and uh, radio wave propagation for 5G. Later, we again able to work very closely with Ericsson Sweden through Ericsson Malaysia. Uh, and we managed to establish uh, IC5G. Uh, later, I will introduce briefly also what is IC5G in UTM Kuala Lumpur campus. And we, in WCC, we also actively participate in activities related to 5G subworking group under MCMC. Later, uh, now, uh, we are in the phase two of high soe from 2018 until 2021. And uh, one of the target in this current phase, which is phase two, we are supposed to start to be able to contribute to not only to the community of telecommunications or wireless, but also to the society. Uh, so that's why, uh, again, we are very proud to share that we've been recognized as and been appointed as ITU Center of Excellence. Uh, starting from year 2019. And then uh, we are looking forward to, to be a global experts and players uh, in the coming years. Briefly, this is our strength or manpower. We are just a small uh, community, co community whereby uh, uh, led by me uh, and also two deputy director and we do have uh, our main uh, senior fellow of Sifu, Prof. Dr. Tariq, and our researcher consists of full-time researcher of six uh, academic uh, and researcher, uh, staff, full staff of School of Electrical Engineering and supported by four research officers three assistant engineer and one assistant research officer. Currently, we are accommodating and we are uh, supervising directly uh, 33 PhD candidates, about half locally and another half uh, from abroad, from international, and also master by research student, so far total of seven. On top of that, we are also uh, accommodating and supporting uh, by supervising master by top course students and also undergraduate final year project. All right, uh, 
briefly, uh, these are some major facilities that available in WCC, WCC Johor Bahru campus, and also WCC Kuala Lumpur campus. So uh, we we are hosting and we are uh, fully utilizing these antenna chamber facilities for antenna design purposes. Next is radio propagation modeling, whereby we do have a channel sounder that can uh, can uh, function and can uh, accommodate uh, activities in terms of test and measurement, and also modeling for 5G frequencies up to 40 gigahertz. Similarly, uh, we also uh, manage to establish these facilities uh, in terms of uh, radiation, EMF radiations, and we are performing uh, activities related to specific absorption rate or SAR. And uh, also, uh, last but not least, we are also uh, focusing on modulation and coding for uh, wireless technology, uh, especially nowadays, will be more towards 5G. All right, so now uh, we shall move to the next section or segment on expectation or issues normally facing when we are talking or discussing about partnership issues between academia and industry. All right, uh, the key word here normally the bridging the gap. So academia and industry should be able to understand each other and to ensure a sustainable collaboration between both parties in order to ensure meaningful R&D activities and outcome and also the employable for human capital. So both entities, uh, academia and industry, uh, normally will be focusing on the uh, services, human capital for academia and services and product uh, for the industry and then uh, in general when we are looking at the expectations between both party industry and academia so we need to understand each other clearly and uh, able to uh, fill the gap and identify or set the priority and properly design the time frame, what to do first and what to give priority at the current time and start to plan carefully in order to uh, ensure the sustainability, sustainability of these uh, industry academia collaborations. Okay, now we shall move to the main segment which is uh, to share some activities and experience uh, between WCC and industry in terms of 5G R&D. Okay, in this segment, in terms of partnerships between industry and academia, I divided into five category uh, as listed here, R&D research and development, training, consultancy, policy and regulations, and also community uh, service. So we shall go, uh, go to the first one on R&D. Okay, we start with uh, our main partner. Uh, currently, we are working very closely with Ericsson. And uh, as I mentioned earlier in the time frame, uh, we managed uh, to establish this IC5G, which is the Innovation Center for 5G, uh, located uh, in UTM City Campus in Kuala Lumpur or International Campus in Kuala Lumpur. And uh, in this campus, uh, and also within the IC5G, compound we manage to bring in uh, quite a number of uh, test equipment required to conduct activities related to 5G. For those that familiar with the uh, 
millimeter wave or uh, wireless or radio wave propagations and uh, frequency that normally been uh, significantly uh, discussed or talked or been highlighted, which is uh, at higher uh, range, which is at millimeter wave, as mentioned here is 28 gigahertz, and also uh, another medium and low frequency uh, medium here is 3.5 gigahertz that uh, bring attention on various issues on coexistence and uh, possible interference between existing and previous uh, wireless technology and the uh, future 5G to be uh, introduced pretty soon. Within this partnership with Ericsson, we uh, formulated three segments whereby starting from a few years back, we are involving mainly on uh, organizing and participating in uh, quite a number of national showcases and also uh, Southeast Asia level of uh, showcases, working very closely with uh, MCMC and other industry partner, uh, partner from uh, various telcos. So in IC5G itself, as for now, uh, we are welcoming uh, visitors from uh, various level, from uh, school or high school or universities up to the industry uh, companies and also uh, researchers whereby in IC5G itself we are able to uh, promote and showcase uh, various uh, applications and use cases for 5G as mentioned here that related to uh, robotics IoT transformations, AR, and also a number of applications for industries when we are dealing with uh, 5G use cases. Next segment uh, will be uh, laboratory for research purposes. As for now, uh, the facilities and infrastructure that managed to be uh, established in IC5G specifically, uh, already capable for us to perform a research activity related to propagation studies, antenna, development and testing, and also uh, wireless communications in terms of implementations uh, in order to provide uh, proper or good coverage for various uh, restrictions and various environment, uh, networking issue and also security and few others. And here uh, we are uh, hosting, I mean the IC5G, uh, hosting a number of uh, Ericsson representative whereby when uh, Ericsson staff or personnel uh, required to perform some testing and uh, uh, showcase and implementation. So they will do it in IC5G, UTM, Kuala Lumpur. And also we are communicating and uh, working very closely with Ericsson R&D unit in Sweden. And for example, uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, recently we managed to sign one memorandum of understanding through the relationship with Ericsson Sweden uh, in order to conduct R&D activities together between UTM and uh, one of the uh, research university in uh, Sweden. Finally, uh, we are also right now uh, preparing for the third segment on the uh, learning and training uh, to provide to the respective community. So I shall move uh, quickly. Uh, also, uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, when we are dealing with activities related to 5G, 
working closely with Ericsson. Uh, we are uh, right now, uh, currently we are focusing on the multi-operator uh, core network uh, and then spectrum sharing, issues related to interference, coexistence uh, between existing available wireless communications uh, services and coverage with future 5G coverage that will be introduced uh, in a very new future. And on top of that, uh, through our own strength from the first phase of ITU COE, whereby uh, we do uh, experience uh, working very closely uh, with part number of uh, partners, uh, collaborators in the field of antenna technology and radio wave propagations. And also continuously, we are working very closely on uh, commercial use uh, on the use cases for future 5G in terms of testing and also uh, the development. And of course, as usual, we are also uh, accommodating or sharing these facilities and experience with our postgraduate candidate in PhD and also in master level. Uh, directly or indirectly, undergraduate final year students also will be benefited from the exposure that been uh, given to our postgraduate students. And then we are also uh, looking on the use cases uh, for the past few years and also training and consultancy project. And uh, as mentioned, as I mentioned earlier, the knowledge sharing to the general public also been conducted from time to time. Another one, the second one on the R&D, I just highlight two uh, main entities or partners, uh, which is the Keysight uh, and Techmark, uh, the supplier and the manufacturer in Malaysia that provide us a very uh, strong support in terms of establishing uh, the test equipment for propagation studies in uh, 5G uh, applications, whereby we are, as I mentioned earlier, the channel sounder that we managed to establish uh, can work up to 40 gigahertz frequency. Okay, that's the first branch related to R&D. Next, we move to training program. And our training program will be more industry oriented. Okay, under this segment on training, uh, will be divided into three. And the first one will be MCMC Academy uh, or MCMC through uh, MCMC Academy. Uh, for those that are not familiar with MCMC, MCMC is our Malaysian regulatory body. MCMC is abbreviation for Malaysian Communication and Multimedia Commissions. Okay, so uh, we experience working very closely, uh, organizing uh, various quite number of uh, extensive series of short courses related to 4G and 5G technology, not only uh, on basics and theoretical aspect, but also uh, until hands-on and advanced level. Level. So the target audience uh, so far is for not limited to MCMC staff, but also uh, to the prospect the industry stakeholders. Next, number two is Ministry of Defense. So uh, for one of the challenges for 5G implementations, in all over the world, uh, all, uh, also in Malaysia. So in terms of coexistence and uh, harmonizations between uh, occupancy of the spectrum for military and civilian applications. So, so far, uh, last year we managed to uh, organize uh, 
one short course on uh, spectrum frequency management to uh, Ministry of Defense, uh, Malaysia. And uh, we are at the final stage of finalizing uh, this year uh, training, whereby we are focusing on the advanced level for spectrum management, working again very closely with MCMC Academy. So the uh, partnership between WCC and uh, industry stakeholders, as for now, uh, involved mainly with MCMC and uh, respective uh, players such as MINDEF and also uh, next is ITU Academy. For those that, for viewers that not familiar with ITU, ITU is International Telecommunication Union, whereby uh, it is a world organization that managing and controlling and uh, do the planning and standards for uh, frequency utilizations and managing the world frequency spectrum. And each country uh, got their own entities or regulatory body as for Malaysia. Uh, MCMC is do, uh, taking that role. Okay. Uh, in year 2019, which is uh, which was last year, uh, WCC UTM uh, been awarded or been granted as uh, ITU uh, COE Center of Excellence. Uh, one of the six uh, center of excellence or ITU COE in Asia Pacific regions. So we do have a uh, center or entity from India, China, two from China, one from Iran, and one from uh, South Korea. This is for Asia Pacific region. ITU uh, divided uh, the whole globe. And as for now, uh, in 2020, this year, the active number of ITU COE across the globe uh, as listed here. Six, for example, six each in Africa, Americas, Arab State, and so forth. And as for WCC UTM, the license or the ITU COE status that being granted to us. Uh, is from 2019 until 2022, and we've been given the priority areas in wireless and fixed broadband. And for others, uh, they are as listed here. Uh, Alhamdulillah, last year, uh, we managed to uh, organize two training or short courses. Uh, in October 15 until 17, uh, related to 5G technology, opportunity and challenges in Kuala Lumpur campus, WCC Kuala Lumpur campus. And December 3rd until 5th last year, related to EMF, human exposure to radio frequency. Okay, I should uh, move faster. The third uh segment will be related to consultancy so uh first is working very closely with tnb uh, our local uh, energy supply for malaysia and we are supporting them to uh help them to promote these implementations of a smart meter and we are conducting uh, some measurement and study related to the public health concern. So it's about the radiations, the exposure of this smart meter and the infrastructure required in order to establish this smart meter throughout uh, Malaysia. And we work very closely in terms of uh, road, uh, road, road tour uh, throughout Malaysia with FOMCA. And then next, uh, second one, uh, under consultancy, we are working very closely with CIRIM. Uh, CIRIM is a standard and industrial research institute for Malaysia and also 
uh, working with uh, Standard Malaysia uh, in terms of uh, looking on the specific adoption rate, SAR, and uh, measurements and verifications to fulfill the compliance for devices uh, within uh, the specified uh, range, 30 hertz to 3 gigahertz. And as for now, our establishment already in the final stage towards ISO certifications. Okay, I should move quickly to the number four, the fourth uh, R&D partnerships, the category in uh, related to industry policy and re regulation drafting activities. First, here we do have uh, three, only one slide I have here. So first will be uh, mainly, uh, as I mentioned earlier, with CIRIMS uh, through Standard Malaysia, MCMC, and also M MTSFB. So due to time constraint uh, for uh, viewers and participants that are not familiar with these uh, entities, mm -hmm. so you may want you may want to Google uh, and you will be able to uh, learn more about all this establishment. And few of our staff uh, actively involved in National 5G Task Force under the Ministry of Communication and Multimedia Malaysia, uh, KTMM, and also MCMC, and related to specific absorption rate or emissions, radiation, uh, involved EMF or electromagnetic wave uh, with Standard Malaysia and also uh, MTSFB under MCMC on uh, various issues related to uh, activities that uh, as organized by uh, MCMC, for example, the National 5G Task Force. And a part number of series and uh, a series of report that already been made available in the MCMC web, web page. Uh, finally, uh, the last one is on community services. So uh, we are continuously engaging uh, activities related to knowledge sharing and demo sessions on 5G technology and use cases as shown here. And uh, one of the main events that been successfully uh, implemented uh, way back in 2016 on the uh, mangrove project at Sabah Burnham uh, with uh, Ericsson in order to uh, preserve the mangrove forest in Malaysia. Uh, so our our own UTM students uh, actively uh, able to uh, it's a good exposure for them to really uh, link and apply the ICT uh, technology and uh, wireless technology for the future 5G uh, use cases or applications uh, as uh, even started from. Uh, 2016. Okay, uh, now we are towards the end. So the lesson learned from this partnership between academia and industry. So uh, it is a continuous journey whereby the knowledge and skills enrichment uh, need to be uh, one of, should be focused in order to establish uh, and build the reputations uh, for any organizations, including WCC. So both parties, uh, universities or academia, and also industry uh, should, should remind ourselves that uh, no free lunch. So that means uh, no such thing uh, nowadays uh, is free. So we, we need to uh, spend time and resources and, and we are not only uh, limit our mind and mindset on dollar and cents. So even though uh, at this particular time we are spending uh, F full effort uh, on uh, activities that not 
reflect to dollar and cents, but uh, we are very uh, positive that uh, sooner or later uh, that uh, outcome will be uh, we will become reality. And uh, very short and, and uh, normal uh, remarks that uh, we need to nourish in order to make it flourish. So uh, patience, care, and, and being able to understand each other between academia and uh, industry. Uh, good chemistry between both parties is considered uh, an important factor to ensure uh, sustainable uh, partnership. So I will uh, now come to the end of uh, the sessions and the, end, uh, the final slide. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity uh, to express my sincere appreciation to all WCC members uh, core researchers, students, industry partners, WCC alumni that contributed a lot in order to uh, bring WCC as what we are achieving right now. Not to forget School of Electrical Engineering and UC Technology Malaysia. And uh, again, uh, thank you uh, very much for the strong and continuous support that we are getting from all parties. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Professor Dr. Jeffrey, for giving your inspiring sharing session about the 5G Industry Academia. Uh, now I would like to open, if you have any questions, you can post throughout our FB line. If you have one or two questions, so maybe we can select from uh, the FB line comment there. So please, if you have any question related towards the 5G, Yeah, the questions may not be limited to issues related to partnership between academia and industry, but also uh, in terms of the uh, implementations and worry, uh, concerns oh. that keep arise for the future 5G. Okay, uh, I just right. have one question related to the frequency spectrums of 5G, as you know that the 5G spec frequency spectrum is at 3.5 gigahertz as well. But mm -hmm. I'm afraid that there is there is also the VSAT at this particular frequency. So how do we have to overcome this interfering issue later on? Maybe from the S3 you will say something about this? Yeah, as I highlighted earlier in one of my slides, uh, these issues already been identified from the beginning, not only within a uh, Malaysian environment, but also it's a worldwide uh, phenomenon. So uh, as for Malaysia, uh, MCMC already established uh, what's so-called the National 5G Task Force and quite a number of reports and also uh, documents that already been uh, published from MCMC website addressing these issues related to the potential interference risk uh, with, as mentioned by Prof Kamal, uh, VSAT, which is under category of FSS system of fixed satellite services. Okay, as highlighted by Prof Kamal, uh, the worry and concern on the utilizations of frequency band at about 3.5 gigahertz. So uh, as gazetted by and, and released by MCMC through National 5G Task Force, there are three uh, band that already been identified uh, to be used for 5G, uh, which is about the first one for 5G indoor is within 3.3 to 3.4 gigahertz so it's, it's not a, an issue there because it's for indoor applications uh, another band will our block will be from 3.4 to 3.8 gigahertz 
And uh, even though it is a bit far from 3.8 to 4.2, that been assigned within the uh, downlink for VSAT and also uh, other similar under category of FSS, we are aware and we are worried and concerned about the spurious signal uh, from the uh, emissions or transmission from 5G base stations that are located quite close or within the vicinity to the uh, 5G uh, users. So uh, there are quite a number of issues and, and also luckily uh, as for WCC, we are in the final stage working very closely with MCMC and also few uh, players. Uh, in uh, providing these uh, services, uh, FSS, fixed satellite services. So there are quite a number of, 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 op uh, of options to, to look into uh, as, for example, uh, the, to, to, to carefully uh, identify and, uh, and establish the isolation distance or separation distance and normally we express in terms of isolation distance between the 5G base stations to the FSS receiver. As we know, uh, VSAT or other similar services under category of fixed satellite services dealing with a very low signal. Whereas the radio base stations for 5G uh, transmitting or emitting quite significant level of uh, signal level. So that's why they are already uh, been identified few uh, alternative or few uh, uh, solutions, options, uh, as for example, the first one will be uh, ensuring the gut band, proper gut band between 5G and FSS uh, receiver in terms of the mm, managing the spectrum. Next will be the bandpass filter a requirement for the fixed satellite services a receiver and also in terms of orientation or pointing angle uh, the tip and also the elevation angle for the uh, establishment of the base station and also the uh, fixed satellite services uh, receiver for users and also uh, not to forget about the environment the topography uh, in order to establish uh, line of sight, non-line of sight, uh, taking into consideration the buildings, the trees, and so on. So as for now, I think uh, uh, that's what I can share. And for those that really interested to know more about this issue, you can visit uh, MCMC website and look for the uh, report uh, published and released uh, under the National 5G Task Force. Okay, thank you very much. So I think we have another question. Uh, okay, do you offer any measurement services using your channel sounder at UTMKL? This okay. from Prof. Azrimi. Yeah, okay, uh, Prof. Azrimi. I uh, would like to know uh, about the utilizations of this channel sounder. Yeah, we do uh, open for uh, uh, sharing uh, and utilizing this channel sounder uh, that capable to be used for various activities within uh, the 5G uh, frequencies up to 40 gigahertz. Yeah, you, you, we do uh, provide this kind of uh, services. Please uh, do uh, drop by and communicate with us. Thank you for the okay. uh, interest and questions okay thank you okay another one uh i have a question regarding the relationship with industry in malaysia from my experience the industry in malaysia they want quick solution usually in three to six months how to tackle this issue i think it's of ridwan from you then. okay yeah thank you dr ridwan so uh well this is a uh, considered a very global or norm uh, issues when we are dealing and we are discussing about academia and industry partnership. As I listed earlier and I highlighted, I keep repeating the, the terminology of chemistry. So if both parties, especially uh, not only as for us academia, we, we, we tend to uh, like uh, 
uh, worry and concern about the expectation from industry. Vice versa, from industry also, they are always uh, looking for the fast solutions uh, to secure uh, their uh, entity interest in terms of uh, productivity. So there are, there are various issues or, or, or uh, services that can be implemented at a very short term, uh, short term solutions. Uh, but as academia, uh, we we are fully understand uh, that issues, but uh, we are also uh, need to keep fulfilling the normal uh, academic uh, requirement in terms of reporting and proper uh, academic content that always need to be maintained. So uh, the, the, the drawback behind it is chemistry or understand each other uh, and uh, the, 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 the chemistry between both parties is really uh, an important aspect in, in, in order to ensure uh, the sustainable and uh, positive uh, partnership. Okay, so we have the last question. Uh, could you tell about the implementation of textile wearable antenna for 5G applications? Wow, this is a very uh, specific uh, applications and uh, I suppose that these questions or issues need to be highlighted in another webinar uh, that will be uh, handled by research group that focusing on this area where our Prof. Kamal also is one or, or one of the main researcher within that research group. You can look at the uh, timetable of the webinar and this this uh, question will be very relevant and and uh, interesting to be shared uh, uh, during that session. So uh, I think uh, I will hand over these questions to my colleague from that research group uh, together with uh, Prof Kamal, or maybe Prof Kamal one can can share a brief uh, response to these questions. Okay, uh, I think maybe we have to discuss on in the uh, and, uh, on the RF and microwave research group later on. Yeah. Okay. So I think uh, with that, thank you very much, uh, Professor Jeffrey, for giving very inspiring take. And also, I would like to thanks to all the viewers. Okay. Uh, with that, I think thank you very much again uh, for all our viewers today. I hope that we can have more viewers for our next uh, webinar that will be given later on by uh, Associate Professor IR Dr. Muhammad Pauzi Abdullah, where the title of the webinar for the next week is Addressing uh, addressing and Future Challenges in uh, Electrical Energy this for Electrical. Okay, so with that, okay, thank you very much uh, for your time to uh, view this uh, webinar from our school. Okay, I'll pass over to our uh, beautiful ladies here, Puan Charifa. Is there anything?
cơ Thôi được cái chơi đấy kìa Thank you Prof Kamal and once again we would like to convey our big thanks to our speaker today Professor Dr Jeffrey Benden for his awesome speech thank you prof okay we are at the end of our session today to all our viewers thank you again for watching this live telecast and don't forget to like our facebook and share our videos to our colleagues and friends please join our next session of webinar series for next week 23rd of June that will be delivered by Director of Center of Electrical Energy System, Associate Professor IR, Dr. Matauzi Abdullah, on the topic of addressing current and future challenges in electrical energy system. Have a good day to everyone and don't forget to see you next week. Stay tuned. Thank you. Wabilahi Taufiq wal Hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.